Well, it is Sunday morning and it's a little late. We kind of got up kind of groggy. Yeah, I'm not I'm not feeling 100% after all of that chicken, I can tell you that. I'm definitely not feeling that great. I didn't sleep amazing. It took me forever to get to bed. <laughs> and uh, I'm feeling a little puffy. After that experience with the chicken last night, which it was delicious, but my stomach's not like doing super great. Uh, we're gonna go back to beef today. And since we bought a roast yesterday, we're gonna make the roast, but since we have this oven and I still wanna learn how to use it, instead of putting it on the rotisserie, we're gonna go ahead and sous vide it and then sear it at the end. So this is the roast that I put a bunch of salt on this morning and you can see a lot of the moisture coming out from all the salt, which is gonna give it a really good flavor and make it super tender. Now we're gonna go ahead and put a bunch of this uh, Redmond's organic garlic pepper all over it. So we're gonna start the cooking process in about an hour. So we're gonna put this back into the refrigerator so that some of these seasonings can do their job, start getting into the meat and really infusing those flavors. It doesn't need to get back to room temperature before we cook because we're cooking it sous vide style. Okay, so let's see if I can figure out how to do this. Turn it on. We're gonna go sous vide mode. We're gonna cook at 130 degrees. We're actually gonna go slightly over to 133. Now we'll go ahead and set the probe. And we're gonna go to 123 degrees because we wanna sear it. Now you can do this on the app. I just can't use the app and film at the same time. And then we're gonna put steam on to 100% because we're sous vide. We're gonna actually lower this down a little bit. 132. We'll hit start. Let it preheat and we're gonna go put the probe in the meat. So I line the pan with foil to ease the cleaning. We're gonna go ahead and put this into the thickest part of the meat, right to the middle. And as soon as that's done preheating, we'll go ahead and stick it in. Okay, time to go into the oven. <coughs> Open this up. We'll look at all that steam coming out. It doesn't really matter what rack we put it on since we're sous vide. Plug in the probe. And get it going. And I'm gonna go ahead and switch it to the app so that the app will alert me when everything's at the right temperature. So the app said we are done. We're at 123 degrees internal temperature. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this out we're gonna put the oven on convection and bump the temperature up to like 470 degrees with zero steam and that should crisp up the outside. Yeah, that, that doesn't look really pretty right now, but I promise it will. Okay, so we're gonna go sous vide off. We're gonna go up to 475 degrees. And again, you can do this with the app, but I wanna be able to show you what I'm doing. We're gonna turn this off. We're gonna let it go for like 10 minutes. And then humidity at zero. And then over here, we're going to put it on the back only, which is the convection. So you got convection, 475 degrees, 10 minutes off, and we're gonna go ahead and preheat it first. So that's this button. Well, I will say it smells really good. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna get rid of all of this water. I'm gonna pat this dry, and then I'm gonna put a cookie cooling sheet on here so that the air can get underneath and crisp up that skin a little bit. Okay, oven is up to temperature. Let's go ahead and put this in. Put this down right here. Open up the door. And slide it in. 
We may flip it depending on how it crisps up just to get that skin a little bit crispy, but we'll see how it goes. Okay, it's done. Let's go ahead and turn this off. I do say to like slowly open the door. Oh, look at that. That. Oh yeah. That looks like it came off the rotisserie. Let's take it out and let it rest for a couple minutes. We'll let that rest for about five minutes. Are you ready? To eat? Yes. Heck yes I am. Oh, look at that. It's perfect. Ooh, that looks good. I just don't want it on my sweater. Mmm. That's really good. I'm sure it doesn't have the charcoal flavor like you would have on the rotisserie, but we can fix that. Hey, what's up, family? I'm Rachel. And I'm Joe. And we are Two, Two Crazy, Crazy Ketos. Ketos. And if you're new to our channel, welcome. Here on Two Crazy Ketos, we do different things like recipe videos and we do product reviews. We talk about various keto topics and then every Monday, we go live on Keto on the Couch. We just kind of talk about what's going on in our lives for the week. You can find us in different social media platforms like Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And we have a website, which is 2crazyketos.com, and that's where you're going to find all of our different recipes. Now we do upload at least five new videos every single week, so make sure you subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to hit the little bell icon, and that way every single time we upload a new video, you'll be alerted to it. It's another one of those vlogs where the intro is in the middle of the vlog. Yes, because it was a busy morning this morning, and <sighs> also we felt like garbage. Yes, welcome to day 13 of The Road Back from Beef, Butter, Bacon, and Eggs. And we learned something. First of all, we learned stop trying new things on Saturday night. Because <laughs> Sunday's a long day. I did not feel good this morning. About halfway through the night, I started getting this bloating feeling. I woke up this morning and like my hands were swollen. Like I can feel some of the arthritis. It just wasn't pleasant and I'm pretty sure it's the chicken because we didn't do anything else yesterday. No, and we ate a good amount of chicken. Yeah, we between the two of us, we ate like one and a half chickens. Plenty. However, I didn't like finish the second portion like, right. that we had last night. I We shared half of, each of us shared half of it with the kids last night. Right. Be, and they were uh, totally blown away at how juicy the chicken was, especially like chicken breast. Smells oh, like a campfire. Smells so good. It smells like um, inside of at the Epcot ball. Oh yeah. The mission space. Yeah, that's how it smells like. <laughs> I love that smell. So back to the chicken. So yeah, I definitely got a little bloaty. I definitely got a little bit of inflammation. It was a lot of chicken breast. I kind of suspected that was going to happen because we were eating so much chicken Before. prior to beef, butter, bacon, and eggs. And I was always getting that like feeling in my hands and in my knees and stuff. So this was a confirmation. Now, what does that mean? Does that mean we're never eating chicken again? No, of course not. We're still going to eat chicken, but now at least we're going to know when we don't feel so great what the cause is. It also means that we probably won't eat nearly as much. So if we're going to have some chicken breast, a small portion along with other stuff, or if we're doing like maybe our, you know, shredded chicken or our cracked chicken, I mean, recipes for those, I'll leave links for them down below. Uh, but we'll eat that kind of stuff. But I just think that the, the breast meat causes some inflammation in at least me. Well, it was for me too. And so here's here's the interesting thing for me. I love eating food where I can get a, a great big quantity, right. right? And in the past, I always leaned on chicken breast because it's lean. Right. In, in my mind, it's very low calorie. And right. that's how I always thought. Mm -hmm. I love steak. I love hamburger. But it was never a low calorie protein that I could have a whole bunch of. Right. You know, when we started on beef, butter, bacon, and eggs, we were eating a lot of beef, big quantities, nice plates full. I felt great. Right. And because I wasn't focused on the calories, I enjoyed it all together. Yeah. Here, I went back to eating a big plate of chicken. 
I felt it in my joints today. I just felt just genuinely yucky all over. The scale didn't move up. Which is what right. I usually... I'm up two pounds from yesterday, which I know is just inflammation. I have continued to go down on the scale. Praise the Lord. I'm enjoying that, right? I'm at 154, and that is whether I'm eating beef or whether I'm eating chicken. So mm. the scale didn't go up today, but I feel like garbage. Right. So now I care. Mm. I care about what we're eating protein wise. I didn't, I thought, okay, all proteins the same meats, right. meats, meat, right. but apparently chicken does not agree with me as well as beef does. I'm going to go ahead and try this. So I did learn something. So again, this is the first time I'm cooking a roast in the, uh, Anova precision oven came out. Perfect. And uh, the edge, it's not edge to edge done this. You can definitely see the pink in the middle. So I, because you have to put it back in the oven, and I had it in there for 15 minutes to get the crispy outside. It was good. That is good. Plus oh, you get wow. pan drippings. Yes. Which is nice. Wow, that is good. That is really, really good. That finishing salt gives the it, perfect flavor. Not, not quite like a barbecue, but this is something great that if you can't be home to man a fire, Yes. <laughs> you can put it in there. It took about two and a half hours to get the whole thing cooked and then also the sear. So I think in the future, if we're going to do another roast in there, I cooked it to 123 degrees internal temperature. But then again, I had to put it into a 475 degree oven to get that crisp on the outside. So I would probably do it somewhere you know to about 115 degrees internal temperature because then when you put it back in the oven for that crispy outside it you know won't go up so much in the middle of, you know, of the meat and stuff because the very ends i like them but they're more like a medium medium well instead of a medium rare isn't it nice to have something that's this delicious that you don't have to babysit right like a lot of other foods I think, talk about the perfect potluck bring along. Mm -hmm. It's this. Yeah. I mean, I mean, how many people is this going to feed? Because most people well, it's are- it's you and me, two of us. Right. But for most people, you're going to like a, a Christmas party, a, a Thanksgiving party, Halloween party, Thanksgiving party. You're going to something where you need to, to bring something. Yeah. You slice this up. Most people are only going to try one or two slices of it. Right. So this is going to go a long way. And it was pretty inexpensive. I mean, it was $5 a pound. So I think each roast was right around 20 bucks or so. So Have you stopped price. to get like a charcuterie board type yeah. stuff? You're going to pay way more than $20. Yeah. Now, one thing about the sous vide um, is it got to that temperature, 123. I told Rachel, okay... It's at temperature, you can start heading home now and I'll put it in to crisp it up. I could have left it in there for another two hours. Right. So long as you keep the temperature of the oven at the temperature that you want the internal to be, it was not gonna cook anymore. So we were cooking at about 135 degrees for an internal temperature of 123, but that was only because I was trying to do it a little bit faster. But if I would have set it at 123, it never would have exceeded that temperature, which is what makes sous vide so good. You get that edge to edge doneness. The only reason this is an edge to edge is because of that final sear on the outside. Oh man. I mean, I know right now is the season where everybody's talking about amazing turkey pan drippings, mm -hmm. but there ain't nothing like beef. Yeah. There just isn't. I'm sorry. Well, I have some news for you, but mm -hmm. let's go ahead and eat and then we'll talk about it. Uh, ah, dessert, or you, at least a, a dinner dessert. You get me. Can I just <laughs> say that? You get me. So we got a piece of Maria Emmerich bread with a little bit of ghee on it. And then... You gotta do the We're gonna pan grab drippings. the pan drippings off of this pan. Look at that. This is like liquid gold. It is. <sighs> mm-hmm. Who needs sugar? Serious. Oh, that is so good. I wish there were more pan drippings. I'm all about it. Mmm. But we poured it over the meat. We poured it over all our, oh yeah, you can, 
You can use it for your plate, too. Nothing went to waste. So I got to tell you about something. Okay. First of all, do I get to keep the oven considering your roast and your chicken? Yeah, I think so. So I'm going to go ahead and list the other oven and the dehydrator tomorrow. I'm excited to try this in dehydrator mode at some point as well. So uh, I got an email. Okay. And uh, our uh, cow or our beef is going to be ready on the weekend of November 27th. So after Thanksgiving. So the, yeah, the Saturday after Thanksgiving is when we can pick it up. Wow. There's a little issue with that. Wait, why? Because we're going camping on Monday. Oh no. So uh, I'm gonna message her because we are headed up to Rainbow Springs and I'm gonna message her that uh, can we pick it up on the way home? On the way home from Rainbow Springs because they're in Tampa. It'll add like 30 minutes or so to our drive home. Mm -hmm. But it would be better than having to drive four hours over and four hours back. For nothing. So just bring a couple of big coolers and, uh, or tell them like, just, you know, have it all frozen. Right. Just have it all frozen and ready. And you have a three hour ride home. So we put as much as we can in the cooler. And then when we get home, it's not going to defrost no. in that three hours, but... I'm excited. We're getting a cow. We're getting a whole beef. We're the those whole people now. Thing. We're that guy. I was talking to someone at church about that we were getting, you know, a beef, and he was like, I really would like to get a half a share. And I told him, this place I was really impressed with. And again, we haven't like picked it up yet, but just in dealing with them, it was really good. And they didn't even ask for a deposit, which most of the places I was looking at, they wanted like a 50% deposit. And I was like, you want me to give you $1,200 for the, I don't know when I'm getting my beef. It could be in two months. It could be some of the places were six months out. I'll tell you what that indicates to me. It indicates I'm not worried. If you don't want this and you drop out, I've got a, a line of people behind you that do want it. Yeah, because she did say to me that, like, you can cancel if you want up until, like, it goes to butcher. Mm -hmm. Because we got the entire thing. Because they usually do shares. And when you do shares, you don't have an option of what the cuts are. Because they're going to take the whole piece, you know, the whole head of cattle. Right. And they cut it up and then... You know, somebody gets a half a share, somebody gets a quarter share, but because we are getting the entire cattle. We're not sharing. We can put it however we want. We also can have all of the bones. We can have all the suet. Which I do want. We can have all the organs. I no, that, <laughs> that we can leave. But it's cool that we're going to be getting that. We won't have to go to Sam's Club and spend $350 on beef all the time. What are we going to do when we don't have to grocery shop anymore? That's so wild. Well, we'll still have to go buy pork. We will need pork. Bacon. We, we will need the stuff to make our you know, our pork belly and mm -hmm. to make our bacon and stuff. But yeah, that's what's going on. So I stuffed. I don't know about you. I'm I, sure we're going to want to eat a little more later. I'm... I'm not sure that I'm going to want to eat a little bit later. We do have that lemon pudding that we made. Mm -hmm. that we might try that a little later oh, as well. Okay. You talked me into it. Let's go watch a movie. I did forget to tell you, I went to Harbor Freight. You're going to be so proud of me. Am I? What'd you do? I went to Harbor Freight and I didn't spend money. Okay. I'm proud of you. So about a month ago, I bought a new air compressor because the one we had in the garage, which was like 20 years old, finally like... Do bit I, the dust. So I pepper all over my face. No, you look beautiful. So I had bought it because we really needed it. But it was full price when I got it. Mm -hmm. While well, today they were having an early Black Friday sale. And we're an inside track member. So we got 15% off. Okay. I ended up getting over $100 back. Back? Back. So that goes right towards the oven. Guess what? What? We're getting a new website. It's actually happening. It is happening. So one of our subscribers has a friend Whoa. who does websites. Yay! And she's doing it very reasonably and said it's only going to take a couple weeks. And she's basically going to rebuild the website. It needs it so From badly. the ground up. So she's been messaging us. She said the faster that we can respond to her like emails, Lightning the faster quick, she baby. can do it. 
but I like some of the ideas. It's gonna look so cool when we're done. I'm so I'm happy. really excited about having it because ours is painfully slow. It's very slow and it's just bogged down with stuff. Junk. Yeah. You know, it's like a junk drawer. Like right. there's stuff in there you need, but finding it is the issue. Yeah, we're gonna add a bunch of new features. You're gonna be able to find things easier. Yay. We're also in the process of taking all of the t-shirts that we were making at home and I'm shifting it all over to Amazon. So you can order a t-shirt. There's no delay in Joe creating it or right. me having to wait for the t-shirt it's getting printed on to come. You'll just be able to order it directly from Amazon and it's prime. So you get it usually within like four days because it's print to order. I love this. And if there's a problem with it, if it doesn't fit, anything like that, you can send it back to Amazon. They'll give you a different one. So Streamlined, baby. I'm super, super excited about it. Now, she did say any products that we need to get on the website. I need to do it because she doesn't want me making a whole lot of changes. So it's been two weeks. Tomorrow morning, I need pictures of our coffee mugs. Yes. So that we can put them up on the website. Otherwise, you're going to have to wait like another two to three weeks. And I know people have been asking for them. Yeah. So we're gonna make this a two day vlog, but before I let you go, let me show you what we're gonna eat for a little bit of dessert. We're gonna have some of this lemon meringue pudding made with keto chow and a slice of bacon. You don't drink coffee. You're a cat. <laughs> Always believes I'm holding out on him. Uh, well. Maybe I'm eating kids. something. Kids. Maybe something I'm eating is better than what he's eating. Good morning and welcome to day 14. Yes, it is day 14. <laughs> I'll take your word for it. I am losing track. So, yeah, last night we watched a couple of movies and uh, just had some alone time and just decided, you know what? We're not getting back on camera tonight. No, let's just go to bed. And wake up and we'll have a two a twofer. A twofer. A two day. Yeah. So we did have that pudding last night, which was really good. Except for I've got to try again. Because yes. here's what happened was I put it in the blender and I thought I got the egg good enough. Right. And then You mean we, blended incorporated. Yeah. And then when we tried it. Like the day, like last night or the, that morning, chunks in it. It had a couple of egg white chunks in there, so I put it back in the blender. So now it was no longer the texture because it was fluffy at first, right? But then when you put it back in the blender, it became more liquidy. It was really delicious tasting. It was such, but a, it didn't have the texture that you would normally have. It was a Rachel move because I fixed it. <laughs> I'm that person. I'm gonna fix it. Probably would have been better to take the one just lump. Knock that out of the bowl and keep eating. It would have been the, the right consistency, but so the taste is there. What I want to do is I want to go get some cans of coconut milk because I don't have any coconut milk left. So I want to get some cans of coconut milk. Also, I'm thinking about trying it with scrambled eggs. So I know Chris has talked about that you can use scrambled eggs. So you make like a wetter type of scrambled eggs, not like overly scrambled. Something the chickens would enjoy. Yeah. So make some scrambled eggs. Supposedly it helps with the farty issue as well, that it doesn't smell as much. I'm totally in for that. So I'm thinking let's try it that way too, because we've got a couple of ideas with that. I have some special requests. You do? Well, I don't want to hear them right now. I know, but I'm <laughs> telling you, there's some special requests because I think we're on the brink of something amazing. Uh-oh, Joe is setting up for keto on the couch and we forgot to say what we're drinking here. So we both have a cup of coffee with a tablespoon of butter and one egg between us. They do enjoy keto on the couch. I love keto on the couch. I look forward to Monday mornings so much. And we all that talking, Gets me hungry, so we actually had two more uh, boiled eggs for making pudding, so I'm going to enjoy these. Oh my gosh, look at the size of this iguana that is sitting underneath this tree across the street from us. He is huge and he is old. Rachel went out for coffee with Anthony's girlfriend, Sarah, and I'm gonna start cooking our dinner because it's gonna take a little time to simmer. I'm making keto chow chili carnivore style. 
So what that means is I'm gonna use the meat, I'm gonna use the keto chow, and I'm gonna use spices, but I'm not gonna use any of the vegetables like the peppers or the onions. What do you have there? Well, I got you some fancy cheese. We've been talking about going to Whole Foods and getting some cheese that's more like top shelf cheese. So for $1.20, I got you two of these wedges in case well, you want you. cheese throughout the week. I, I had gone to Trader Joe's for coconut milk, completely struck out. Whole Foods had it, thankfully. They also had cold bottles of mineral water. I didn't need any because we bought some, Right. but this was already cold and ready to go. So yeah, I look like a complete weirdo driving home. <laughs> had it right between my legs and like drinking it. I look like a wino, but that's okay. It was just Italian sparkling mineral water. This is cool because I was actually thinking to myself how proud I am that I have not been snacking on cheese. Fist we bump do it. have a whole bunch of cheese in the house, but so long as it's not cut open, I won't dive into it because I don't want to have a little piece and have it start getting hard or deal with that. And This seems doable. This, this is good because I can have a little bit of cheese and then not have to worry about doing drive-bys of cheese and stuff. But yeah. we've been really good on not having cheese. I know that I'm okay with the cheese, but, you know, Rachel had an issue and we're trying to do one thing at a time. Right. So we are having... What's this? Keto Chow Chili carnivore style you've made it even more meaty well so i didn't want to have peppers and onions because again i'm enjoying the beef i also don't have any peppers and onions <laughs> and honestly one of those might like cause an inflammation probably yeah. the onions so i decided to just make our keto chow recipe of you know the chili but it's really just keto chow, the meats, and a few spices. So the spices are enough to like add a bunch of flavor without having the peppers and the onions. The peppers and the onions are really there to just give you some volume anyway. I so am, this is... I see chunk bacon. Ground beef. It is ground pork. And I didn't feel like using bacon. And I had a package of Strecoline. Which I oh. got when we uh, went to that Carol's place yes. in Georgia. So Strecoline is a very salty bacon. It's like a little slab. A lot of people would get it, cut it up and fry it or put it in the air fryer and eat it as like almost like bacon bit kind of things. Mm. So the slab was about this big. So I cut it up into pieces. I cooked it in the pot. And so it is. it was very salty. So I didn't even have to add any salt at all to the chili. Wow. Because believe me, it is salty. I tried one piece. It reminds me a lot of like the Italian pancetta, which is an extremely salty yeah. kind of bacon. You would use that like in a carbonara or something like that. Well, I got to dig into but this. But there's, this is going to be a hearty meal. It looks like it's not a lot because it's one bowl, but this is going to be a hearty meal because I used one and a half pounds of ground beef <laughs> and I used a pound of the uh, ground pork. Yum. And that is these two bowls. So wow. there's a lot packed into these little bowls. Go ahead and try you it. Wanna dink it? Dink. This feels like dinkable. Dink. 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 Mmm. Mm-hmm. Oh my goodness. Wow. I just love this chili. Oh my gracious. The keto chow tomato basil gives it a nice like gravy. Mmm. Now I know you're gonna get some people who are gonna be like, wow, there shouldn't be tomatoes in keto in chili. I like something in there. You know, it, it to me, it tastes really good. Is it this wow. strictly carnivore? No, it's got spices in there. But it's as close as you can get, you know, to getting that flavor. Not, wow. I don't put beans in my chili and uh, just not having any vegetables in there. Oh so. my goodness. And this would be really good too over hot dogs or like sausage. Oh, yeah. Just like to make a, like a chili bowl. Oh my gosh. Or... Even sprinkled over pork rinds right. for to dunk it. Oh my goodness. One of the things good. I like about using the keto chow instead of canned tomatoes, which is how I used to make it, is the canned tomatoes will add a lot of carbs to it. The keto chow only has a little bit. No, by the way, the tomato basil is beef based. I mean, there is some yeah. of the xanthan gum and some of the acacia gum in there, but that's it. There's no sweetener in there and it's using a beef base for the protein. So there, it's pretty carnivore taking out the acacia fiber, which I am perfectly fine with acacia fiber. It is good for your body and your body does not digest it at all, at all, at all. 
It is so stinking flavorful. So I was thinking, we got a couple of messages. I was going through comments. I'm almost caught up on comments. And, Amazing. <laughs> um, there were some people in there that were asking like why we don't count calories and net carbs and stuff like that. The reason we choose to not do complete net carbs is number one, I don't want to do the math. That's first of all. We're like Chris. We're lazy, right? He would say. Right. Oh, I hate it when he says he's lazy. But um, I don't want to do the math. Second of all, a lot of companies are adding in too many things that they're calling fiber that you really shouldn't be deducting because your body is going to at least partially digest it, if not digest all of it. Right. Same thing with sugar alcohol. So something, for example, like maltitol is actually considered a sugar alcohol. Well, you don't want to be deducting that. It's going to increase your glucose and it's going to make you go to the bathroom. I mean, I, I to me, it's just simple. If you want to deduct, deduct something, I would say go ahead and deduct something like erythritol or Swerve, which is just a brand, or allulose. But I personally would not deduct fiber just to be on the safe side. If your body doesn't digest it, you know what the worst that happens is? At the end of the day, you had less carbs than you thought you did. Yeah. So I would rather see everybody increase their total carbs to 30 and then not have to do the math. The other reason that I don't want to do net carbs is, you know, I need a limit because if I just say net carbs, I can easily turn a hundred net, a hundred total carbs into less than 20 net carbs. Yeah. I can turn it into less than 10 net carbs and that's just fooling myself. So give yourself like a cap. So even if you want to do net carbs, say like, Hey, I'm going to do 20 net carbs, but no more than 30 total carbs or no more than 40 total carbs. Having that combination is good. Because when you do that, it's just going to make it so that you don't overeat things. You know, you don't overeat something that works out from 10 total carbs to zero net carbs or one net carb. But the other thing is, is I don't really believe in counting calories because counting calories, in my personal opinion, doesn't work as well as counting grams of fat and grams of protein. And if you're doing net carbs, a lot of times people will deduct the fiber. Okay, so for example, this product has 10 grams of fiber. That's approximately 40 calories. When you deduct that fiber, are you also deducting the calories from that? Most right. people aren't. You just deduct the fiber and go zero net carbs. But it's you're still saying that it's got those 40 calories in there. So my personal opinion is don't worry about calories at all. When you look at a product, don't look at how many calories are in there at all. Just look at the amount of grams of fat, the amount of grams of carbs, and the amount of grams of protein. And the only ones that really matter is that, because then you can do a one-to-one. -one. Say, well, I'm eating 150 grams of you know protein a day and 150 grams of fat and carbs combined. This has got 20 grams of protein. It's got five grams of fat and two carbs. You have a better chance of having success if you're just looking at the grams of everything instead of the calories. Oh, I can't finish my food. I am beyond stopped. Who would have thought? One bowl. One bowl. And I feel like I had to change my clothes. I, I literally had to get in my pajamas after that. I have about a half a bowl left and I'm full. And I don't want to be full because number one. It tastes so good. It's delicious. Number two, I haven't eaten anything else. Hello, my baby. I haven't eaten anything else today. And number three, I really wanted some keto chow ice cream for dessert with our dinner. And now I can't eat anything else. Maybe I'll be able to eat more in a little while, but it's 740 already and I don't want to eat like super late. I just know, you know me. When I'm done, I'm done. When I'm hungry, I'm hungry. And when I'm done, I'm done. I'm yeah. telling you right now. Well, we are awesome vloggers. We went to bed last Not. night. <laughs> we totally went to bed last night. We did the premiere for um, day 11 last night and we ate our chili. I ate a half a bowl. I was so stuffed. I went into like a food coma. I ate the entire bowl and I don't know how I'm awake now. <laughs> <laughs> like it hit me like how is a little tiny bowl so hearty because it's all protein and fat 
Nothing extra in there. There wasn't no negotiating with that thing. I worked on the computer for a little while. I went in to watch a movie with Rachel. I think I saw 10 minutes and I was out cold. I tried watching Roxanne, an older movie with Daryl Hannah and Steve Martin. And I saw the opening credits and then the closing credits. And I was like, oh my gosh, I missed the whole movie. Well, we're gonna end this vlog now. So if you like seeing videos like this, take a look at some of the videos that we have linked right over there. Also, make sure you take a look at the most recent video, which I'm gonna put right over here. But whether you head this way or you head this way, don't forget to head this way. Subscribe to our channel and click the little bell icon and that way every single time we upload a new video, you'll be alerted to it. Till tomorrow. Bye. Bye.